All right. So how many coaches out here, how many people work with athletes? Anyone? No one? Two? Three? Four? Awesome. What I have to say is pretty important, though, I'll be honest with you. All right, so I'm going to use the example of football, but if anybody has any specific questions about any other sports, please let me know right, you know, right now. Um, to me, there's four different areas of football strength and conditioning. You've got your summer session. You've got in-season. You've got your winter session, which for us is ending up next week. And then you've got spring ball. And they're all attacked a little bit differently, but there's certain rules that we follow regardless of the training period, okay? In season, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, summer, summer. Because of the NCAA and their infinite wisdom, tongue in cheek, <clears throat> we have eight weeks in the summer where we can work with the football team. And there has to be a break in those eight weeks, okay? So the way we set it up is we have our first four-week block, we give them Fourth of July week off, and then we have our, our second four-week block going into the season, okay? So we train four days a week. We do the, the, the most important training that we get done is done on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Thursday and Friday are very important, but it's the end of the week. The weekends come in. They're a little tired. You know, you get the bulk of your work done early in the week. So we squat heavy on Monday and we bench heavy on Tuesday. We do a, like a speed squat on Thursday and a speed bench on Friday. Right? Sounds like West Side, right? It's basic temp basic template we, that we follow. All right. Does that make sense? All right. So we train four days a week. The most important stuff is done early in the week, OK? Now, the way we set it up in the summertime, your first movement of the day is going to be explosive and fast. So Olympic lifts, sprinting, Jumping, okay? The first movement of the day. So, second movement is your strength stuff. Your squats, your benches. And then the third <clears throat> movements are your fillers. You're filling the blanks. Your, make sure you kind of touch all bases, all right? And, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Um, all right, so for instance, all right, first of all, does that make sense? We good? All right. So when we come in on Monday in the summertime, we have a hill that's, I don't know, maybe as high as the ceiling, and it's like 20 yards long. So we line them up, we sprint up the hill. We do that 15 to 30 times, depending on where we are in the, you know, in the, in the, the, the course of the training session, right? So we're fast and explosive. Then we come in the weight room, and we squat. And we squat heavy. We do basically fives, fours, threes, and twos. And then we, you know, it's kind of like block periodization, if you will. We just, you know, it, it, it's not rocket math, right? We train them heavy on Monday. After that, so squat is a lower body push. We follow that with a lower body pull, some kind of deadlift, RDLs. Uh, you know, we do what we call double over deadlifts, and this is, double over deadlifts is basically an RDL, I'm kind of getting off topic here, but double over deadlift is an RDL without the eccentric, without the down phase. Men can put so much force into the ground when they run. They pull a lot of hamstrings. The eccentric phase of a lift is the most taxing. So. When we're going to try to put some weight on the bar doing double over deadlifts. And a double over means you just hold the bar double overhand. It limits how much they can hold on to. And so basically what they do is they get in RDL position, they pick it up, and they drop it. Pick it up and drop it. We take out the eccentric portion. We get enough hamstring pounding from sprinting 
and all that stuff. So it's a little way to minimize some wear and tear on the hamstrings. With women, it's not such a big deal because, quite honestly, women just don't put as much force into the ground. So that's like a football thing that we – football and men's basketball we do a little bit with. But anyways, so we've got our heavy squat followed by our heavy lower body pull. Anywhere in the five to eight rep range. Whatever, okay? Then we follow that up with a lower body push and a lower body pull, all right? Step ups, uh, you know, like lateral lunges, um, single leg stuff. A lot of single leg lower body pushing, all right? Doesn't really matter what it is. You're just getting some work in and you're getting some reps done, all right? We'll pair, usually we'll pair that with a lower body pull. Valve slide leg curls, glute ham raises, partner glute hams, uh, partner um, uh, hamstring curls where you kid will lay on the ground and you just have the other kid hold his leg and he resists against, you know, something like that. It's just little work, you're just trying to get done, just trying to kind of fatigue all the other muscles. Does that make sense? All right. And then we'll throw in some abs and call it a day. All right. Our speed day is basically exactly the same, except we do speed work instead of uh, heavy squatting. But pretty much the template stays the same, right? If you want to get a lot of work in, after you do your main lift and then like your first, like so for on squat day, you squat heavy and then you do your heavy lower body pull. If you want to pair everything up after that or like set up supersets after that, it's a great way to get extra work in. It's a great way to build up their work capacity. It's a great way to get a lot of work done in a small period of time. All right? And then we always finish up with abs, whatever, crunches, sit-ups. It's just ab work. It doesn't really matter. Make sense? All right. Bench day, same thing. Um, the difference, it's the same basic setup. The difference is we bench first, we lift first on our, on our bench days, all right? So we'll come in, we'll warm up, uh, we'll hit our heavy benches, we'll follow that usually with an upper body push, incline bench, dumbbells, overhead presses, whatever. An upper body push for some volume, and then we do two upper body pulls. We do a buttload of dumbbell rows, because we don't have a seated row machine. Um, we do a buttload of dumbbell rows. We do a buttload of pull-ups. We do lat pull-downs. We do more dumbbell rows. Uh, we do them with straps, we do them without straps. We do a lot of dumbbell rows, all right? I can't stress that enough. But it's, it's a great exercise. You can get a lot done just you know, doing that stuff. So after that, same idea as squat day. Heavy bench, upper body push, two upper body pulls, you can pair a lot of that stuff up, and then we throw in guns. Let the guys do buys and tries, all right? Usually we'll set up something fun with them. Like our big kick now is we just put chains on the bars and have them do chain curls, and guys pull their sleeves up. It's like freaking prison, and they're just, they love it. You know, but you just, you're just getting some work done, and you get the main work done early, and at the end, let them, let them look good in their uniforms with those tight sleeves all jacked up. You know what I mean? They want to do that. They're going to work at it, right? Speed bench day, same basic idea, all right? We do all our benching first, and then we, uh, we condition afterwards, okay? Squat days, we sprint first, because there's no way you're going to sprint after you squat. You're not going to be any good at it. Upper body days, we do our conditioning. 120-yard uh, shuttles, 60-yard shuttles, 5-10-5s, uh, um, whatever. It's conditioning. We're trying to make them breathe heavy. We're trying to build up their overall anaerobic endurance. Wow, there's a science word for you. All right. Does that make sense? Do you guys understand what we're coming at with that? All right. Squat days are all about speed. We run fast and then lift heavy. Upper body days. We lift heavy. We body build, basically, and then we condition. Make sense?